that can be. Come build a land where sisters and brothers, anointed by God, may then create peace. Where justice shall roll down like waters, and peace like an ever-flowing stream. We'll build a land where we bring up good tidings to all the afflicted and all those who mourn, and we'll give them garlands instead of ashes. Oh, we'll build a land where peace is born. Come build a land where sisters and brothers anointed by God may then create peace where justice shall roll down like waters and peace like an ever-flowing stream. We'll build a land building up ancient cities all raising up devastations from old, restoring ruins of generations. Oh, we'll build a land of people so bold. Come build a land where sisters and brothers, anointed by God, may then create peace. Where justice shall roll down like waters and peace like an ever flowing stream. Come build a land where the mantles and praises resound from the spirits once faint and once weak. Where the oaks of righteousness stand, her people, oh, come build the land, my people, we see. Come build the land where sisters and brothers, anointed by God, may then create peace, where justice shall roll down like waters. And peace like an ever-flowing This is a new day. This is a new day full of sound and light and expectation. This day has been waiting for you. This day has been waiting especially for you, whether you can see me or not. This day has been waiting with open arms, just for you. This is the day we have been given. Let's not waste it. Come what may. Come now and let us worship together. I'm just warming up, folks. Yeah, I seem to never get tired of these words. 
You know, I, I repeat these words about this being a new day because it truly is. Every time I stand up here, there's always a surprise. There's always something unexpected. And I've grown to actually look forward to that. It makes life beautiful and rich, full of possibility. And it's such a pleasure to actually be with you this morning and see you. My name is Reverend Joseph Boyd. I welcome you live to 1105 Elm Street in Youngstown, Ohio, one of the best cities in the world. This church has a very special history in this city and in this country. We have been welcoming those who are marginalized, those who are vulnerable, those who've been at the outskirts of society, economically, politically, and socially, for over 125 years. And this is our latest expression of our mission, to transform ourselves in our community. And right now, we are doing that through doing completely virtual ministry like you see right now, and supporting our church virtually. So we have events every single day that you can participate in just by using this very simple link every single day. I would like to thank those who participated last Friday in the Story Lounge. The theme was adventure, and I learned that we have some very interesting characters in, these church, in this church. I loved hearing every single one of these stories. So thank you, John Chardle, for organizing, and thank you for all who told your stories last Friday. It truly is something that makes us more human when we can tell our stories and then have somebody hear them. I would like to invite you Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, please click on this link and join Melissa Smith for Tea and Sympathy. It's a time to talk about anything that's on your mind, to ask the questions that you're afraid to ask, and engage in warm company with a cup of tea with those who are in the same predicament as you. So please tune into that Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. I also would like to put an announcement out to the community. If you need some yard work or some work done around your house, we have a number of people right now in our congregation who are unemployed and looking for some kind of income. So if you are in a position where you have some work that needs to be done and you have some income that you have yourself that you'd be willing to pay somebody to do some of that work for you, um, we would love uh, to connect uh, people who are unemployed with people who need work done so it can be mutually beneficial. So if you need any work done, please just email me, jboyd at uuyo.org, and I will connect you with members of the congregation who would love to have that, that opportunity to make a little bit of money. And last announcement, we want to make giving to UUYO very easy for you. So if you go to our website, uuyo.org, at the very top, you're going to see a link that you can click on say, that says Give Online to UUYO. If you click on that link, Give Online to UUYO, you're going to be able to access our Give Away the Plate. That is a tradition in this church where we give 100% of our offering to an organization. You can give that way. Also, if you would like to set up a one-time or recurring gift to this church, you can do that as well. There is an app through Venco. It's called Give Plus. Venco Give Plus. It's an app that can be downloaded through the Apple Store or Google Play. And you can use that during service to be able to give, again, to the organization directly and also to this church. So please consider getting that on your phones, either through Apple or Google Play. It's called Venco Give Plus. We appreciate your generosity. And now I'd like to go to beloved member, Lisbeth White, who will do our chalice lighting. When Reverend Joseph asked me to do today's 
chalice lighting, my thoughts for some reason immediately went back to childhood and taking on the challenge of the high dive. There was preparation involved, the decision to do it, the scoping it out from all angles, watching other kids go off, and even climbing the stairs a few times only to chicken out and climb back down. Eventually, I did jump and even dove. And I learned that along with the exhilaration of it, uh, that water, which had always seemed so soft, is actually incredibly hard and painful when you hit it the wrong way. Good lessons to take forward. So that seems like one kind of a threshold, an awareness of stepping up to a ledge and knowingly taking that step. There's the time before I went up the high dive and the time after. But life also brings us to thresholds without any conscious awareness leading up to them. So I know the very spot I was standing on when I knew in a single moment that I needed to leave my marriage. The spot is actually right through that doorway and just a few steps into the next room. In the midst of the most difficult time I have experienced in this life to this point, on that spot, I heard a still small voice within telling me I needed to free myself from a relationship that was a source of deep suffering. That moment changed my life in profound ways. But unlike jumping off the high dive, leaving a marriage was not something I had ever thought I would do. And now we come to you and you and you and this crazy, not crazy time that we are in with the COVID-19 pandemic. But this time, rather than scoping out and planning or the dawning awareness of a threshold to be stepped across, I feel like we are already on the other side. We haven't physically been together in many weeks, and yet our connections to one another are deepening profoundly through this time. Am I right? None of us would have chosen this, yet I feel we are being touched by a profound grace. Our connection is not at all dependent on our being physically together. Who knew? Or maybe we knew intellectually, and now we have the opportunity to really let that learning in to ourselves. We are seeing and listening to one another with new levels of attentiveness, in part because of the very limited tools of communication we have at our disposal. I really sincerely hope we will carry these skills forward, this intention forward, when we're able to be together again. Sometimes in the past when I would drive home in the afterglow of a service, I would think about what would it mean for me not to be able to physically get to UUIO? What if my health didn't permit it? Or my finances? Would my connection to this community remain? I know now that the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Joseph's sermon last Sunday spoke of a liberation toward rather than a liberation from. We are living into that liberation toward a deeper, more enduring connection with one another and the greater world right now. We light this chalice. We light this chalice to celebrate the unexpected joys that we find on the other side of unanticipated thresholds. And following those wonderful words, let me read the covenant for UUYO. Important words for all of us to listen to and live into. This is our covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Our operatory is different each month, and so we speak today 
about where our giveaway plate money is going. Each month we give to an organization that supports transformation in our community, which is the heart of our community and our mission. In our church's historic commitment to the well being of our community, we give 100% of our offering to those in need. UUYO's Give Away the Plate recipient for May is Action Incorporated and their Food Insecurities Task Force. Action is proud to be collaborating with Cultivate Cafe during these life altering times to provide 250 hot meals per week to the vulnerable in our community. Our well-trained cafe staff are following best practice food safety practices and precautions to provide utmost protection to the community we are serving. Gloves and face masks are being used by all personnel along with regular hand washing. Volunteers delivering meals are leaving the meals in a safe place at their home without actual contact. We are hopeful that your generosity will allow us to faithfully continue this service for weeks to come. We will now receive the offering that supports the life of Youngstown, the Mahoning Valley, and our wider world. I was blue just as blue as I could be. Every day was a cloudy day for me. Then good luck came a knocking at my door. Skies were gray, but they're not gray anymore. Sky smiling at me, nothing but blue skies do I see. Blue birds singing a song, nothing but blue birds all day long. saw the sun shining so bright never saw things going so right noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love my my how they fly blue skies all of them gone nothing but blue skies from now on saw the sun shining so bright never saw things just going so right noticing the days just hurrying by when you're in love my my how they fly those blue days all of them gone nothing but blue skies from now on nothing but blue Please join me for a meditation.
Our reading this morning is the poem, The Door by Miroslav Holub. Go and open the door. Maybe outside there's a tree or a wood or garden or a magic city. Go and open the door. Maybe a dog's rummaging. Maybe you'll see a face or an eye or the picture of a picture. Go and open the door. If there's a fog, it will clear. Go and open the door. Even if there's only the darkness ticking, even if there's only the hollow wind, even if nothing is there, go and open the door. At least there'll be a draft. Once I lived the life of a millionaire Spent all my money, didn't have any cares Took all my friends out for a mighty good time Bought bootleg liquor, champagne and wine Then I began to fall so low Lost all my good friends, had nowhere to go If I get my hands on a dollar again I'll hang on to it till that old eagle grins Cause nobody knows you When you're down and out In your pocket a penny and as for good friends you don't have any when you get back upon your feet again everybody wants to be your long lost friend I set it straight without any doubt nobody knows you when you're down and out oh down and out oh in your pocket you know you ain't got a penny and as for good friends you don't have any if you get back upon your feet again everybody wants to be your long lost friend I said it straight Without any doubt Nobody knows you Nobody knows you You know what we're talking about Nobody knows you When you're down and out fundamental fact of life can cause us the most fear. Change. We are up one day, then we're down, then we're somewhere in the middle, then we have no idea where we are, so we look around at our neighbors and we read everything we get our hands on in the hope of discovering where we are. Even the definitions we use to define and shape our lives are prevalent to the great winds of change. Changing thoughts about what it means to be good, what it means to be just, 
what it means to be authentic. The, cha the changing tide can uncover questions and categories we never even thought of before. Many people seek religion to come to terms with the inescapable nature of change, interpretation, and instability. Many also seek material excess or distraction to numb the palpable sense that at any moment all of this, all of it, could change. Many will seek bliss, some drugs, some will seek to live in such a way that they feel they have some sense of control over what is happening, some kind of constancy, some kind of never-changing reality. We all do this. It's what makes us who we are, and it has led us to the predicament we are in. Thank goodness we all do this, and thus we are all in this predicament together. Differently confused and uncertain, perhaps, but uncertain nonetheless. Certainty is a tempting drug. It is very tempting to adopt a view that says there are certain ways our life and the world will go. Oddly, there is even a temptation in assuming the worst, because even that gives us some semblance or illusion of control. It is tempting to assume the best and believe with certainty that the best will prevail. Again, we all do this to a certain degree and this is normal. It has made us who we are, and it has led us to the predicament we are in right now. You can seek certainty in many ways. You can seek certainty by believing there are certain people who hold the answers. That even though I am deeply uncertain about just about everything, someone knows with certainty, something I do not. You can say to yourself, since I'm confused and uncertain, everyone else must be equally confused and uncertain. So why listen to anybody about anything? Just follow your own way. Chips fall where they may. Again, we all do this to a certain degree, one way or the other, and this is normal. It is what has made us who we are, and it is what has led us to the predicament we are in. We can't get enough of stories about how change wreaks havoc or causes great misfortune or fortune. We love stories, both tragic and comic, where the unsuspecting person who is certain of themselves and their lot is surprised and confronted with the inescapable nature of change. We love stories of the fool who discovers oil in their backyard and moves to Beverly Hills to live their new life. We love the blues, stories of those riding high or at least feeling confident, ending up destitute and alone with hard-won wisdom. We love to see characters full of pride, who we see as the audience from a mile away. They are destined for a fall, and we watch them every second of that fall. We love all this because we all do this to a certain degree, and it's normal. It is what has led us to being who we are, 
and it has led us to the predicament we are in. The winds of change may seem to come every season, every generation, every election cycle, every full moon. Change comes during all these times and more. If you ask any one of us to tell the story of our life and map it out, most of us will probably list certain events that highlight who we are, moments of change in the narrative that led us to being the person we are today. There are some important changes and milestones that is guaranteed. Birth is a big one. Childhood. Adolescence, for some of us, adulthood, for some of us, career, for some of us, children, and more. We may list these turning points as the events that have made us who we are, the events that have made up our life and charted our course. The theme we are exploring this month is threshold. At first blush, I thought this to be a peculiar theme, since my first impression of threshold was a stagnant place, like a door frame, or a line that is drawn, of which we are compelled to either cross or retreat from. Compared to other themes we've had, such as liberation or resilience, threshold seemed a bit obtuse and solid. But I thought about it a bit more, and now I feel much more inspired. We may think there are a certain number of thresholds in a life, typically the big moments, birth, graduations, moves, marriages, divorces, etc. We may think that our life is a collection of these big moments, and this is true, but I would like to invite us now into a different understanding. Often, we may see a threshold as a moment of real significance where lots is at stake, like the moment we are in right now. But I think the power of these big, chaotic, earth-shattering moments is not to introduce us to a new truth, but to uncover a truth that was always there, but we never noticed it before. It can be tempting to think we only get a handful of truly life-changing moments personally and as a collective world, that we get a certain number of moments in which we can completely and utterly transform our lives. This is true to an extent, but only to an extent. The true power of a threshold, a point of limitation, is not just to show us what is possible in this moment. It is to show us what was possible all along. Many of us have the palpable, visceral sense that we are living in transformative and important times. I think this is true. But the power of this realization is much deeper than this particular time and place. At this particular time, we have many people who are yearning to go back to a particular point in time when there was more of a sense of control and normalcy we have seen this desire play out in election cycles, wanting to return to an Eden that was once great, 
but now has become so confusing, chaotic, and muddled. Many are yearning to go back to a time when we could take more for granted things like the health and well-being of one another. Again, we're all doing this. All of us. And this is normal. It has made us who we are, and it has led us to the predicament we are in. We can think that a threshold can only be encountered when there's a certain level of intensity or force, something that compels us to see more clearly the room we are in and the dawning awareness that there are other rooms out there in which life is also happening, waiting for our response. But again, the power of a threshold is not in its being bound to a particular place and time. The power of a threshold is its being seen and encountered at a particular place and time, which illuminates all places and all time. At a moment of encountering the threshold, we have the opportunity of seeing that every moment of our life was a threshold, even if we never bothered to mark the occasion. At a moment of encountering something which has the capacity to completely and utterly change us and completely and utterly change our world, we have the opportunity of seeing that every single waking moment has been presenting us with this capacity. At a moment of encountering a crisis that demands a response, we have the opportunity of seeing that our response was always being sought, whether we knew it or not, whether we marked the occasion or not. The power of a threshold, a moment of both crisis and opportunity, is to awaken us to the fact that all of life is a continuous crisis and opportunity. Of course, most of us, including myself, don't desire to live in this heightened state day in and day out. And we don't need to. But a moment like this, that is so raw and powerful, can remind us that this reality is always present, whether we feel it or not, whether we register it as a threshold or not, whether we mark it in our mind as significant and important or not. One of my colleagues did a research project on the inner lives of various people over 90 years old. It was a series of interviews about the nitty-gritty of their lives, all completely anonymous. They were personal questions, questions about sexuality, questions if their partner was really the love of their life or not, questions about regrets, best moments, etc. One through line of the study was that a strong majority of the interviewers said that the source of their greatest regret and their deepest satisfaction in life were about relationship, relationship with their children, relationship with their partner, relationship with themselves, relationship with their friends. These were all Americans, and a strong majority said 
they did not find great satisfaction they expected to find in their careers or in doing activities they felt compelled to do day in and day out. But it was the quality or lack thereof of their bonds with other people that both gratified and kept them up at night. My colleague asked one man, do you wish you had accomplished more? He said, no, I wish I loved more. Of course this would make sense. It would make sense that the quality or lack thereof of our relationships would be the hallmark of our lives. It would make sense that taking time to stop on the threshold of I and thou, of you and me, would be worth our brief and precious lifetime. This makes sense except for one hitch. We seem to be inundated into a culture that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to destroy our planet for ourselves and our children to support lifestyles most of us are miserable in. It doesn't make any sense, but we do it. It doesn't make any sense to work 50 to 80 hours a week, spending time away from those who offer the most meaning for our lives, but we do this. It doesn't make any sense to try like mad to become somebody great when we have the people at the threshold, on the threshold, ready to love us as we are. It doesn't make much sense to push ourselves towards something great when we are surrounded by that which is truly great, our bond with each other. But we forget this. All of us forget this to a certain degree, and it's normal. It has made us who we are, and it has led us to the predicament we are in right now. It seems the call right now is just as much as needing to cross the threshold is needing to rest on the threshold of our life in this moment. Just to hang out there for a bit and look at the view. Some of what you'll see is hard, like loss. But even the loss is further proof of this fact, that what really matters in the end is our bond with others. It is our most precious, most dear, and most tender accomplishment. We grieve so much because they mean so much. It's a sign of our love and our humanity. We're all together on this threshold, and the collective mind is mad with possibilities, both positive and negative. Will we completely reclaim the earth as our own and become better stewards? Will we further encourage dictatorship and the embarrassment of our current democracy? Will we treat our fellow citizens with dignity and respect and find ways to economically support all of us rather than a small group? Will we run in fear from any of these life decisions and seek an Eden in the past? Or will we find our Eden on the threshold an Eden that was always present 
but one that we always missed. The threshold of this moment is showing us an enormous amount of human limitation. Having a healthy respect for limitation is the mark of humility, one of the most important characteristics we can develop as a species. The paradox is, in humility, we discover that a threshold is never a hard line, never solid. It is ever-changing. A threshold, like life, is changing. And once we change, the world changes. And once the world changes, we change. The threshold of this moment is bringing us into a much wider awareness if we let it. An awareness of this threshold, this time, this moment, can open us up to all the thresholds that await us and all the thresholds that we missed. My only parting suggestion as we rest on this threshold is keep the door open. Keep it open. Don't shut it. Don't try to shut off what is happening. And don't be in too big of a rush to cross the threshold. Rest on the threshold for a while. The rest of our life is waiting for us right there. Please pray with me. Spirit of love, we are grateful for a sunny day, grateful for technology, even when it doesn't act as we expect it to, grateful for all the unseen hands that make our life possible. We offer a special gratitude to our sound and tech people, Tim Raritan and Andy Crabb, who make this experience possible for us in this time and this place. We are grateful for the gift of our life and the gift of awareness to know that what truly matters in this time and in all time is our bond with others, our relationships. Please help us to make this the compass of our life, to chart our course in relationship and through relationship, and to be at peace. All this we pray. Amen.
this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we keep in our hearts and share with all the world. As you depart, please remember the one great fact. You are loved and never truly alone. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, Comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Now's the time I'd love to hear from you. If you have anything you'd love to share, comment, or question, now is the time. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Hi, Andy, I have a question. I'm not Andy, I'm sorry. Reverend Boyd, I have a question. Yeah, sure. How, how do you stand at the threshold without walking over? How do you not, when you are at a threshold, not cross over? It's a good question. Yeah, it's something I'm going back and forth on too. Um, I guess the way that I think about it is instead of trying, it's more of a mental 
exercise, instead of trying to see where we're going to go and cross over, to be able to have the ability to look around and see where we are. So even if you feel compelled to take steps, as we all do, we're going to, you know, we have to move, to take time to also know where we're crossing. Because I think that every moment that we're in is a threshold. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the journey and part of the greatness of life is being able to see both where we are as well as where we want to go. Okay. So I, I see it as kind of a balance. All right. I understand now what you're saying. What I think is we don't get to the threshold unless we've looked around first. So it's just a question maybe of semantics. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good question. I, I love these. The poem that I read reminds me of part of the answer is go and open the door. Go yeah. open the door there's no threshold. Exactly. Uh, and so the fear of opening the door or taking that next step uh, is awesome for some people, but without doing it, uh, you don't see what's out there. And we need to see people who want to take that next step and we can take the step with them. Yes. That's what's so important. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, you're right. That, that's the first step is being willing to open it or keep it open. Yeah. Um, Reverend Boyd, I would just say we can pause at that threshold only to pause there and look around, but do not stay there. Yeah. And who is this? Can you say your name? This is Gloria. Gloria. Great. Yeah. Thanks for that comment. This is Tom in New York City. Hey, Tom. Um, <laughs> Hello and love to all, and I hope all are well. Thank you uh, once again uh, for the beautiful words, and uh, and the music was uh, once again beautiful and inspiring. And uh, I think uh, I I got a smile, but then I I really got the point of that poem, even if it's just a draft. Do open the door. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sometimes I have all these expectations. Oh, this has got to happen. I've got to step into this. But uh, no, uh, just sometimes feeling the draft is is all that's needed. <laughs> yeah. And in the summertime, that might be a relief. <laughs> might be a relief. The draft is enough sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. This is Liz, but I just wanted to share that the person that wrote that poem, uh, Melissa Smith will know this, um, but that person's name, uh, it means, the first name Miroslav means glory to uh, people, glory to, the, or glory to peace, glory to the world. Sorry, my cat wants in on this call. Um, and then- Cosmo. Cosmo, <laughs> Cosmo yeah. But the um, but his surname means um, dove. So, glory to peace, glory to the world, dove. That's that person's name that wrote that poem. Yeah, he's a he's a really good poet. Yeah, thanks for that, Elizabeth. I didn't know the meaning of that name. Very thought provoking sermon. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Any other uh, comments? Anything you'd love to share? Anyone else? Um, I just wanted to know, uh, did you know that that's what they tell people to do during uh, earthquakes? No, stand I didn't inside. Think about that. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Just a comment. That would have been a better sermon. <laughs> <laughs> It was a great sermon, Reverend. <laughs> yeah, no, that adds a whole new element. Yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about that. That's great. Thank you for Rev making that connection. Reverend Boyd, this is Lenore. Hey, Linda. Lenore. Oh, Lenore. Hey, Lenore. Sorry. I just wanted to ask you, so by what you're describing as a threshold, um, does it seem like, like life in general, like we're always kind of in a threshold? Yeah, it's what I'm playing with, that there are certain moments that we mark as, you know, we're at a threshold, whatever that is, you know, the threshold of adulthood or the threshold of retirement or, you know, something like that, a big moment, something we can mark, but that actually every moment is a threshold if we develop the awareness to see it. 
Okay, that's kind of what I thought you were saying. Thank yeah. you. It's it's it is very thought provoking. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Lenore. Anyone else like to say anything? Say hello. Doesn't have to be anything uh, you know deep or something you wrote out or something. Just anything if you want to say hello to people. Feel free. I really appreciated. Um, this is Sue Anzalotti. Hey Sue, yeah. Elizabeth sharing uh, her her uh, threshold moment. Very personal. Yeah, I appreciated hearing that too. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you, Elizabeth. It was. Too. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go through a crisis with any other group. <laughs> that worries me, Lisbeth. That really worries me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all don't know what we're doing, but we know that. <laughs> we're That's really what mean. makes it beautiful. Hello. <laughs> Any last burning um, comments, questions, or just want to say hello? Hello. Hi, everyone. It's Gary. Hello, Mary June. Hi, Mary June. Your yard looks nice. You always yeah. look uh, beautiful. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Oh. See you, too. Some people uh, might remember Beth Anderson. She was a realtor in town. Um, yes. My mother knew her. What about her? She died yesterday. Oh, my God. Update. Thank you. Uh, so uh, many people will know her from living on the near side. And, and she was a uh, <laughs> force of nature. Just thought you might want to know. Yeah. Thank you. For Thank that. you. <coughs> well, if there are any other uh, comments or questions <coughs> you don't want to uh, say so here, feel free to be in touch with me. Um, I'd love to talk with you if uh, you have something you'd love to share or talk about. <laughs> and thank you all. I hope uh, you all have a wonderful Sunday all across the country from California to New York City to West Virginia to Colorado. I know people are tuning in from all over. So wherever you are in whatever time zone, please be well. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, yeah. everybody. Have Peace. A good week. Bye bye. Bye bye. See Thank you, you Reverend Joseph. Thank you, uh, everybody. Have a great week. Love Thank you all. You. Okay. Bye bye.